So, which one should Gene Staples love more, Niagara Amusement Park or Clementon Park? Let the face-off begin. Hey everybody, it's Paul from the 125 Roller Coaster Challenge, and today we're kicking off the new Showdown series. The concept for this video is pretty simple. We're going to compare two similar parks or coasters and see which one takes home the trophy. If we're comparing parks, it's a face-off. If they're coasters, it's got to be a clash. So kicking off the series, we couldn't have asked for a better rivalry. Both Niagara Amusement Park, which is located in upstate New York on Grand Island, and Clementon Park, which is located 30 miles east of Philadelphia, have so much in common. Both are traditional amusement parks created in the 1900s. Both hit some hard times in the early 2000s. Both actually closed down for a few years and both were saved by Gene Staples and are now part of the IB Parks family. So in this video, we're gonna be comparing the parks in categories such as location, the beauty, the price, kids attractions, family rides, thrill rides, food locations and food selection, both the water parks, carnival games, merchandise, roller coasters, shows, highlights, and what the parks have coming up for the future. Yes, that's a lot to discuss, but at the end of the video, you will know a lot more about both of these parks and be able to choose for yourself who won the face-off. So let's begin with a quick history of each park. Clementon Park is the older of the two parks, with its history beginning in 1907 as a trolley park. In the 20s, it had a movie theater, a steam-driven carousel, and even a roller coaster named Jackrabbit. The park was owned by the Gibbs family from the beginning until 1977, when the family sold the park to the Baker family, who then sold it to the Adrenaline Family Entertainment in 2007. That lasted four years till it was sold again to Premier Parks in 2011. They added a few new attractions, such as the Big Wave Bay, the Scrambler, and even the Dragon Coaster from Bowcraft Amusement Park, but then it all ended. No, seriously, on September 8, 2019, the park just closed and a lawsuit followed, and then you know how that goes, and it went back and forth and back and forth, but it ended with a public auction to be held on March 23, 2021. Niagara Amusement Park has actually gone through quite a history of its own. In fact, it started out as Fantasy Island in 1961. At this time, the park was actually pretty small, only being 12 acres, but if you can't believe it, it actually had five themed areas, which included Action Town, which had the rides, Animal Kingdom, which was basically a petting zoo, the Garden of Fables, which featured fairy tale scenes, the Indian Village, which actually had Native American dancers, and Western Town, which had a Wild West show, and that's gonna be very important later. The park expanded to 85 acres and grew their adult offerings, but in 1981, the park was in dire straits and fired for bankruptcy. Charles R. Wood Enterprises would come to the rescue, who was also the founder of another New York park, The Great Escape. He added Waterworld in 1984 and commissioned a redesign of the Garden of Fables to now have a castle and a moat. In 1989, the park would be sold to International Broadcasting Corporation, but this would only last about three years before Charles would reacquire both parks again and actually rename the park Two Flags Over Niagara Fun Park. That just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Finally, Martin DiPetro would purchase the park and hence Martin's Fantasy Island was born. He held the park from 1994 to 2016 and the highlight of his time as owner was the amazing Wild West show along with the opening of the Silver Comet in 1999. Martin sold the park in 2016 to Store Capital that leased the park to Apex Park Group that year. They brought back the original name, Fantasy Island, remember? But quickly the park got a reputation for deterioration and the attractions not running due to mechanical and short staffing. In February 2020, the park was closed and the rides were put up for sale. There you go. Two small local amusement parks closed down and were about to be stripped of their rides, their land, and the future memories for families who grew up with them. But then, something unexpected happened. On March 23, 2021, the auction for Clementon Park and all of its assets began, and then quickly closed. An unknown buyer purchased the entire park and the assets for $2,370,000. 
In May of 2021, someone entered into a long-term agreement with the store capital and renamed the park Niagara Amusement Park. That person was Gene Staples, who originally saved Indiana Beach Park, and IB Parks and Entertainment was created. Okay, now you know the parks. Let's begin the face-off. We're going to start off with location. These parks are almost total opposites of each other. Niagara is located on Grand Island, near Niagara Falls, which does have locals, but also benefits from tourists. Clementon Park is located along a highway in Clementon, New Jersey, and is nestled around strip malls and typical suburbia. Also being near Philly, this is pretty much a locals park. So we have to give the location to Niagara. It's not in the countryside, but it's far enough from roads to give you a sense of isolation. Along with location, there is also the beauty factor, and this is actually closer than you might think. Yes, Niagara does an amazing job with their landscaping and winds, but because Clementon Park has a pond, maybe even a lake, it does have some natural beauty which is especially nice considering the rest of the area is pretty developed. Okay, let's talk pricing. The Clementon Park Season Pass for 2024 is $74.99, which gives you both the park and the water park Splash World. For the 2024 season, the season pass is $59.99 for Niagara, which gives you their water park, Splash World, also. Both have monthly payment plans and are worth it, but if you're going to go in price, Niagara wins again. Here's a little hint for you. The season pass works on all IB parks, Indiana Beach, Clementon, and Niagara. We have had this pass for two years, and I personally pick mine up at Clementon, which is closer to me. Okay. Let's get into the rides. Niagara has an entire section called Kitty Land, and it's located on the right side as soon as you enter the park. It currently has 10 attractions and more are being added throughout the year. It is well themed and has daily shows, which will be discussed later. Clementon Park also has a Kitty Land, which has six attractions. The big difference in these lands is the aesthetics. While Niagara is all outside and has beautiful landscapes, the Kitty Land at Clementon Park is inside a giant pavilion. Yes, if it rains, the kids can still play, but on a typical sunny day, it looks more like a family fun center instead of an amusement park. Another win for Niagara. So right now, it looks like Niagara is running away with this contest, but wait, Clementon is just getting started. Next on the docket is Family Rides. Clementon has five operating with two more on deck to be launched this year. Niagara has four also, but when you break them down, that is where the winner will be seen. Both parks have carousels, with Niagara highlighting theirs the second you walk into the park. The vintage carousel at Clementon is right in the heart of the park, but gets the win because, well, it's vintage. Oh, and it also has a zebra. Both parks have trains, with CP Huntington Railroad at Clementon Park taking you through the edge of the park, while the Iron Horse train at Niagara basically does the same. Niagara wins here because not only does it have a better course, it really goes right along the Silver Comet, but they also have a daily show. You can judge both trains yourself by checking out the train's playlist with the link above. Okay, so currently both parks are split. So who is the winner of this category? It comes down to Niagara having bumper cars and a scrambler, while Clementon Park has a tilt and whirl a scrambler, and a Ferris wheel. There is also a difference that there are two new attractions launching in 2024. So the winner is Clementon Park. So we're about halfway done with this face off. And if you lasted this long, why not drop us a like? It's a simple click for you, but it means a lot to us. And it also helps YouTube suggest this video to others, which we greatly appreciate. Now let's get into the thrill rides. This is where Clementon Park shines. While Niagara has one, which is basically a flyer, Clementon has three and a fourth one opening in 2024. Yes, the Sea Dragon is pretty standard, and actually Niagara should be launching their suit. But the Flying Pharaoh, the Ring of Fire, yes, it's a flat ride, not a coaster, and the up-and-coming Thunderbolt are all serious thrills. Of course, what puts them over the top is their log flume, King Neptune's Revenge, which is one of our favorites of all time. It goes over the pond for most of its length, which is something that I have never seen before. Yep, Clementon Park gets the win here. Of course, we're going to be ending the ride section with our favorites, the roller coasters. So Clementon Park has two, the Family Dragon Coaster and Hellcat, while currently Niagara only has one, the Silver Comet. 
There was a kitty coaster called Minor Mike being put together on our last visit, but it hasn't shown up on the active list for 2024. They also have the Serpent, which is under construction, which also should be opening soon. But when it comes to coasters, let's judge the two main attractions. Hellcat is running great, but as of our last visit, you can still only ride the first car. Silver Common is actually our 25th ranked coaster in 2023. So even though Clementon Park has two coasters open, Niagara gets to win. Now, let's talk food. Niagara has five snack stands and really about three main food locations. The Kitty Lamb Cafe has cheesesteaks, chicken sliders, tater tots, chicken fingers, while the Barbecue Barn has one of our favorite items, the Mac and Cheese Barbecue Cup. The water park features a local favorite, Carubba's, with their amazing pizza logs. At the end of last season, they also got their alcohol license, so beer was also available. Clementon Park has six snack locations with the diverse offerings, such as funnel cakes, cupcakes, and even pie cups. There are four main food locations with AXO Tacos, which has quesadillas, and of course, the walkie tacos. Clementon Grill and Fry has a standard fare like hot dogs and chicken tenders, while the Wing Kitchen has both boneless and bone-in wings. There's even a Pizza Hut. Clementon has a little extra though for the adults, because besides beer, they have two full bars in the water park, with wine and even mixed drinks. For food locations and selections, Clementon Park wins both categories, with the Supreme Sweets Dessert Shop and the bar putting them over the top. So currently the score is 5-4 with Niagara in the lead. Told you these parks were pretty close. So we just mentioned the water parks, so let's see which Splash World wins. Niagara's Splash World has six attractions with their Lazy River, the Doubledale Falls, and the Cannon Bowl highlighting the park. In contrast, Clementon's Splash World has eight attractions with the Big Wave Bay, Laguna Kahuna, and the Shipwreck Bay bringing the fun. Did we mention there's also two bars? Yep, Clementon Park wins this one hands down. So we are tied up and we have five more categories to cover. But before we do, if you like our video and content, why not subscribe to the channel? We're gonna be hitting 60 parks in 2024 and you just know that these two are gonna be on that list. We're going to be adding a new revisited series along with so much more. So by subscribing and hitting that little bell to all, you won't miss a thing. Okay, the next category is Carnival Games. Clementon has a standard midway when you enter the park, featuring basketball games, whack-a-mole, the goblet toss, and balloon busters. There's also an arcade by the carousel. Niagara is a little different with all the games being in pretty much one area near the Silver Comet, and they include the balloon pop, horse racing, and others. There is no arcade, but what makes this competition close is Niagara offers free mini golf. Yep, right in the kiddie land area of the park is free mini golf. You just grab a club, a ball, your scorecard, and walk on in. So it's pretty close, but the win goes to Clementon Park. While the arcade and mini golf kind of cancel themselves out, the nicer midway takes the prize. The next category is shows. And here, well, Niagara wins. Why you ask? Well, there's none at Clementon Park. While Niagara has some of the best show lineups we have seen in any park. There are multiple shows daily with two shows for the kids, the storybook show and a puppet show. And there's four shows in the Wild West section, which include the Haunted Shootout, the Golden Nugget Saloon Show, the New Sluice Show, and of course, the Wild West Shootout, which has been putting smiles on people's faces for years. There's even a robbery on the rail shows that takes place on the train. Niagara for the win. So it's tied again. Let's discuss merchandise. Niagara has four stores, which include the general store with great park merchandise. I got a hat there and I still wear it almost every day. There's also the Western Town Mining Supply Store, the Main Street Sweets and Treats, and the water park has a store called Beachcombers. I love the variety of items and I really do love their new logo. Clementon Park, by contrast, has one store, the Carousel Gift Shop and Candies, which has a lot of items. We actually bought a beach towel there, but the win goes to Niagara because their logo is just amazing. Now let's talk about what we mean by highlight. This is their key attraction that brings in the guests. When people think about this park, what are they actually thinking about? Well, for Niagara, it's the shows. The Wild West show in particular, 
is what brings the families because they want to have their kids have the same experience that they had when they were kids. Clementon Park is slightly different, with their highlight being Splash World. And this is really the only water park in the area besides Sesame Place. And this water park really does have a lot to offer. The winner for this category is Clementon Park. We are tied again with only one more category to go, the future. Let's be serious for a second. Neither of these parks' futures are given. While Gene Staples saved and invested a lot of money into both of these parks to get them up and running, the crowds just haven't been there when we go. Granted, we tend to go during the week, but this year we hit Clementon Park on Father's Day and the water park was hopping, but the dry park was pretty empty. The same with Niagara, with the kiddie land full, but the Silver Comet basically being a walk-on. We need to support both of these parks, so this category is a tie. Yep, the final tally is 8 for Niagara and 8 for Clementon Park. The first ever amusement park face-off ends in a tie. So what does that mean? There's no winner? Well, like I said in the beginning, the winner is which park wins the categories that are special to you. Do you like shows? Well, then Niagara is for you. How about water parks? Head on over to Clementon Park. Not to sound too cheesy, yeah, too late, I know, but the real winners are us because both of these parks were slated to close. Every year we get the ride Hellcat or Silver Comet is a win. When your child sees a cowboy fall from the roof at Niagara or you grab a beach drink at Clementon Park, that's another win. So check out each category and see which fits for what you are looking for in a park. And remember, when you head out to Six Flags Darien Lake or Niagara Falls this summer, take a few hours and visit Niagara Amusement Park. When you head to Six Flags Great Adventure or the shore in July, why not stop by Clementon Park for a spin on Hellcat? Every visit helps these parks continue to not just survive, but also grow. Thanks for watching, and we would love to hear about your experiences at either one of these parks. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you would like to learn more about either one of these parks, please click on your choice of Explore videos above. Thanks again for watching, and we can't wait to see you in the queue in 2024.